We are in a really somber place. It's beside a highway. And it's actually the memorial to honor Giovanni Falcone, who was one of the prosecutors who was murdered by the mafia. He was prosecuting the Maxi trial. There were about almost 500 mafiosi indicted and they got 300 convictions. It was a six year trial and it was actually staged inside the Uciardone, the old prison in Palermo. But what is so heartbreaking is um, Paolo Borsellino was also killed, a prosecuting magistrate. But this is where Giovanni Falcone and his wife were killed. And they were killed in the most brutal fashion. The reason this is at the side of the highway is that, you know, he was under heavy guard. In fact, they worked in a bunker. They were under constant guard. But what the mafia did was that when he was driving along the highway, they had put explosions under the highway and they actually detonated the explosion. They blew up the highway. And that's why um, they were able to kill him. And this monument is here. The city really mourns him. The city really um, honors him every year at a memorial that's in front of his house. And it's really a part of their anti-mafia efforts. Just never forget what really happened here. And, and to commemorate a person who fought so hard for justice in Sicily. We are here in West Palermo at a really important place. This is the maximum security prison, Pagliarella, where the prisoners are held. Mostly, it's the highest security prison here. But why I wanted to bring you here today, and we're a little nervous because we just got yelled at and told to go, <laughs> was because to talk about the rise of the mafia in Sicily and also Sicily's efforts to stop it. In 1986, there was a very famous trial. It began in 1986, lasted six years. It's the so-called Maxi trial. 500 mafiosi were indicted, 300 were convicted, and they are here behind these walls. This is essentially a prison village. And this is part of the country's efforts to prosecute and put behind bars the mafia. This is really a, essentially this compound is huge. Obviously you hear them in the background, they don't want us to film it but it is essentially a prison village. There's mass buildings all behind me and where the inmates are. Well, we're driving away from Pagliarella because we were asked to leave by the security, which might be the first time in my life that happened. We weren't filming anything that a visitor to the prison wouldn't see. But I thought it was really important because the novel bookends the rise of the mafia in the 1800s. But also, with, I wanted to uh, illustrate Sicily's attempts to fight it, which you cannot come here and not be see how much they are trying to stop this. There's monuments to anti-mafia ever. There's a museum to uh, anti-mafia uh, in Corleone and also in Palermo. And yes, Corleone is a real place. And uh, I really wanted to show that. And I think we got to show you a little, but the novel will illustrate um, really, I think something essential about the rise of the mafia and also about crime and punishment and justice, because that's not confined to Sicily. That's a, a universal and theme and, and issue. Okay. Crazy, right? I I can't even begin to tell you. I want to fill in some of the details that you couldn't see. So, of course, that is like the Pagliarella is the Mac Pagliarelli is the maximum security prison is right outside of Palermo. I went there on an impulse because I said I would talk about creative process for a minute. When I when I started to go to Sicily, I had an idea of what I wanted to write about. I wanted to set the book in the 1800s. Honestly, it was going to be a love story and mostly a love story. And when I started to talk to people and do research, I met with historians. You'll see some of them in the, uh, I read a lot of books. You'll see some of them in the videos like last week. I was going to build it around Dr. Pisani, Baron Pisani, which as you know, last week. And the more I learned, the more I said, well, you can't really ignore the presence the, of the mafia here because it started here. And what gives you the point of that is that you see so many signs about anti-mafia. Sicily is trying so hard to change its image. It's trying so hard to fight the mafia and fight criminality that 
that you almost can't ignore this as an issue. And part of that's what happened to me. I was like, well, you know what? I don't want to, I don't want to write some BS story even set in the 1800s. And so I started to educate myself after that trip about what is the role of the mafia? How was it? How did it start? So to find books like this, the mafia of a Sicilian village in 1860. And I started in 1830 in the book, starting to look at the actual causes of crime. It really becomes, what is the cause of crime? It isn't people are evil. You see how old these books are. This one's a little later, like 1940, 1950, all about the mafia. But the more you study, you realize that, the, that these causes way back when, this is all about the Cosa Nostra, the beginning of the mafia, which began in Sicily. And as we've talked about before, was really a, um, it was it was due to the economic lack of opportunity for lower classes and the stratification of the classes. You couldn't move up, so you found another way to feed yourselves because poverty, starvation, hardship, uh, illiteracy were widespread there among any class but the upper, upper one. So I sort of had a change of thinking while I was in Sicily. I was like, you can't ignore this if you're going to write something that is, that is true, not only emotionally, but more importantly in historical fiction, true to, true to history itself. And so when I started to investigate, I would try to look back. And so then what happened is it was almost an impulse that day. I said to Laura, who does the filming and is my bestie, I said, we need to go to this prison. I kind of want to see what it looks like. Now, I will tell you that I've been writing all kinds of fiction, including crime fiction, for 30 years. I have made plenty of visits to prisons to write characters who are inside prison, to interview prisoners, to talk about justice in America or justice in the world. We're trying to make this a really resonant, resonant novel. And I will tell you that there is a detail that when I go into a prison in, in America and in Philadelphia, for example, it's the one that always breaks my heart, which is you'll go in a prison waiting room and you'll be, they're always kind of the same. You sit in benches, you get a number, they know they call you when your person that you're visiting is ready. There's always a tool, there's always a toy box. When I, I saw it at women's prison, I saw it at Pick in Philadelphia, a big box of kids' toys. There's kids' toys there because children are there visiting fathers and mothers. And when you see that, I put that detail in a book, it's a Rosado book, because I said, that is the effect of crime on families. Now, go back to Palermo. Here I am in Palermo, and I realized after doing all this research in Sicily and talking to people that the big maximum security prison is 10 minutes inside the city. I'm like, Laura, let's go. So we get there and we go. Now, when we get there, you see, you saw briefly, because we were, we were really getting nervous, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, you can see we're in, we're in public space, okay? We haven't entered any prison area. We're not in any waiting room. And actually, the way it works is there's an outside waiting area, which you take a bus to to go get into the prison proper. I look at the waiting room, and I couldn't take a picture of it. It's exterior. It has a thing over the top. What do I see? All of the seats are painted with happy animals giraffes chimps elephants monkeys all these little happy things and i say to myself that's because kids visit here it was the same as the toy boxes in the prisons in america families are affected by incarceration families are affected by crime and justice or injustice and i saw it there and i said we're going to film this i don't know what i don't know if we're ever going to use it but i don't think i can come to the place that basically houses all of the most dangerous mafia members in Sicily, which is where all the mafia members started life, we're gonna take some movies, Laura. And so Laura starts taking pictures and then they start coming and you can see I start talking really fast. And you also see that I get a little nervous because basically I'm just a lady from the suburbs and I don't know how to do battle. And then they're backing us up and that's why there's a break and they're like, turn it off. And I'm like, we're not turning it off. And I, I speak very, I understand a lot of Italian, but I don't speak it very well. And all I'm sort of saying, autore, autore, which just kind of means either author or Toro. <laughs> I'm like just trying to say a lot of words that I'm just some lady. I'm just filming it. And after all, I'm kind of like a little pissed. I'm not doing anything that is untoward. If I were waiting for somebody, I would have been on the chairs with the chimpanzees and the giraffes. So with the back is up, the back is up. Finally, they're like, we want the camera. Give us the camera. And I'm like, Oh no, 
Actually, I said something completely profane, but I was like, Laura, Laura. So we go, we're running and we run to the little, uh, we have a little bus and there's, cause there's a guy driving us, right? And I'm like, do we email the email the, the film to yourself? Cause I'm thinking they're gonna take this. But then basically that's when Laura, and I'm like sort of a little feisty about it, but, I, but Laura's like, remember, you don't have any identification. She reminds me because in that moment, I had totally forgotten that the day before I had been completely pickpocketed in Palermo. That should be a title, pickpocketed, but anyway, in Palermo. But I, my wallet was stolen. All my money was stolen. My ID was stolen and my passport. So basically I'm trying to tell the Italian, you know, prison consabula, whatever, you know what I mean? The, the prison police that I'm an author and if they took me, which they were kind of threatening to do, and our property, which they were also threatening to do, I had no way to prove the, the, uh, my identity. And not having a passport when you're under lock and key, like I'm saying Midnight Express, even though it was Italian. Happily, I got my wallet back. It's a whole long story. Here's a picture of me. If you didn't see it earlier, I think I showed it in an earlier video. This is me with the Palermo police. I showed this picture to my daughter and she said, your fr her friend said, why does she look so happy? And I don't know, I just, I just was, because uh, I made a report that night, they were super nice. And um, little did I know that I would almost be arrested the next day, but I wasn't. And we got away, we got away with it. And we get to come home and tell the story and show the video. So you can see me being really all nervous, but also a little pissed. And the part that you don't get to see is that when Laura and I finally get in the thing, get in the bus and she emails herself the video, right? So we know we have that, even if they take the, uh, take the phone. I'm, I say to the driver, go, go. And he's like, momento. And he gets out of the car because he's mad that they were throwing us out. He gets all mad. He gets in front of the, the bus or little bus. They call it a sprint now. This is what it kind of was. And he starts fighting with those four guys you see coming at us and they're having a fight. And I'm like, dude, Andiamo, which I'm pretty sure means let's get the hell out of here. And eventually he gets in the car. So that is my little adventure. It, you know, believe, I will, I will say to you this, why this matters is that when I got home, I was like, Lisa, what kind of book are you gonna write? You can't ignore the fact that there is, the mafia started in Sicily, but what do you see? What I saw on my trip was a lot of hardworking, honest, wonderful people who showed me around an island they love and hated that its reputation was harmed by the reputation of criminality. And I said, you can look at the criminals or you can look at the law abiding people. And there's a lot more law abiding people than there are criminals. And I said, that's the book you're going to write. And that's the book that loyalty is. There is a guy in, in loyalty, his name's Gaetano. And he's just a normal person, uh, but he cares very much about justice. He's kind of the hero of the book, although I think there's a lot of heroes in their own way. And he fights the corruption in Palermo, the corruption that he sees everywhere. He's one man standing up. It's, it's not unlike the theme of Pigeon Tony's Last Stand, because I believe that there's heroism in us. I believe there's heroism in ordinary people. And there's more people who are good than people who are bad. I believe it till my dying day. So that's the behind the scenes of my trip. Uh, it, I, I used to think that's embarrassing. Now I don't think it's embarrassing because I think it's kind of great. And it really happened. And it really was what brought me to the insight that ended up being kind of the beating heart of this book. So that's why I show it to you tonight. And also I was so honored by the quote, which came from Hillary at um, Doylestown Lahaska Bookshop, we have a wonderful independent bookstore who, as we've talked about previously, you know, in this business, you get an advanced copy of your book and you get to send it to booksellers. And if they like it, they say something nice. And Hilary Kotecki said, if Godfather 2 had a prequel that was less noir, right? I'm not that dark, and more human, this would be it. Loyalty is an unforgettable story. That made me so happy and it's kind of fitting for tonight because I really wanted to present a true, but a positive and uplifting view of justice, of love, of family and of humanity. That's what loyalty is about. 
and I ended up getting a new passport. So it's all a happy ending. You come to me for happy endings, believe me, I deliver. I do hope you'll enter. I do hope you support the book and get a copy. I really think you'll love it. By the way, in the free department, I wanna mention again, Pigeon Tony's Last Stand is free to Amazon Prime members. And so is the audiobook, which is an incredible performance by Eduardo Bellarini. What is it about? It's the story of one man who's standing up for justice. I honestly think I'll write that till the day I come home. Well, I guess I am home, but you, I guess the day I die, but I'm getting kind of like weird with the immortality tonight. But I think that, you know, I, I just love the drama of that. And I love the fact that I think it's kind of true that anyone can stand up for, you know, we've had all kinds of tumult in our country, but you can always stand up for what you believe in. You can vote for what you believe in. You can donate for what you believe in. You can march for what you can believe in. You can stand up for a cause. You can stand up against for an, to cure an illness. Um, there, you have power as an individual. And what I like to do is take a look at somebody who looks powerless, like Gaetano, like a guy who's waging a war against a corrupt system in a corrupt society, where the rule of law is being disregarded in loyalty, or Pigeon Tony, where is a guy in South Philly who can't figure out how to get the drug dealers out of his neighborhood. He's an 80 something Italian immigrant. Uh, he does not look powerful. He doesn't look like Spider-Man, neither does Gaetano. But uh, my job is to find the strength in these characters. And I think a little bit for me, and I hope for you too, it helps you find the strength in yourself to do whatever you have to do, to keep going, to do good. And love is always the answer. And so spread the love. I love you guys. I am very, very grateful to you. And I'm so grateful that you come on Monday nights, that you supported my books, that you write these nice things here. Edie, stay clear of pickpockets and getting arrested. rest that I will. Um, thank you very, very much. And I appreciate you so much. And I'll see you next Monday night, 7.30, Bibby. Bye-bye.